So as I've studied and learned more about the best ball handlers in the world, I've learned that it's less about moves and more about how you move or the tools or the techniques that you have. So in this video, I'll give you five tools or techniques which aren't necessarily moves, but different ways to get your defender off guard and be as shifty as possible. So the first one, which actually seems really simple, but I promise you we don't use it as much as we should, is just going from a slow move into a fast move, right? So we talk a lot about changing speeds, how it makes you more shifty, but we don't really get into the nitty gritty of how we do it. So for example, I could be going slow between the legs and then I step out with a quick cross. Number one, this lulls that defender to sleep. It sets a pace or a rhythm for it and then catches them off guard when we speed it up. Number two, it typically feels pretty good as a ball handler going from a slow move into a fast one instead of just slow to fast with our dribble. So here are some examples. You can see how I'm alternating between that slow and then the fast. And this transition between the slow and the fast is something that we can train and we should be training in our ball handle. Number two is implementing fake stops or fake deceleration. So this is another thing that I just don't see done enough. It's very simple. We're always snatching back and stopping on a dime, but the best ball handlers have learned how to fake that snatch back or fake that deceleration. So they'll be coming in, they're about to snatch back and instead of snatching back, they kind of find this and can get out of this if they need to. Now, since basketball is such a game of deceleration, like I mentioned, we're always coming to stops. Defenders are typically used to this. So when we come to kind of a half stop and then we fake it and get out of there, this is another thing that's really gonna leave them on their heel. Another really unexpected tool that we can use is working off of the inside leg on our way to the basket. So a lot of athletes aren't comfortable with this initially, whether it's the joint angles that they're put in, whether it's just the fact that they've never been exposed to these before, but being able to get downhill and work off of that inside leg is really unpredictable because we're typically working from the outside leg. So whether that's getting into a cross with the inside leg, whether that's snatching back with the inside leg, it's just throwing off the timing of that deceleration so that defender who may be taking an extra step downhill to predict that second outside step is now gonna be left in the dust when you stop one step early with that inside leg. So again, there's something to experiment with, to get comfortable with, and start to find different creative ways to implement into your ball handle. Number four is doing more of what we call smooth deceleration. So instead of these kind of rigid zero to 100 where we're stopping, starting, stopping, starting. I'm going more from that kind of 20% speed to that 80% speed and smoothly switching out in between fast and slow. So just look at the difference here as I'm going as fast as I can and then stopping and then as fast as I can and then stopping versus when I'm slowing down to about 20% speed. So I'm still kind of moving, but I'm just slow and then speeding up off of that and then gradually getting back into the 20%. It just looks a little bit more fluid. It's tougher for defenders to guard. And most of us can already do that zero to 100. What the best ball handlers are able to do is that kind of 20% to 80%. And then lastly is moving east and west more than we're taught to. So from a young age, we're taught to go north and south, right? Drive straight downhill to the basket. Don't really get too much to the side because that's not how you get to the basket. And logically, it kind of makes sense. Why would we go away from the basket? Why would we move side to side if we have to move forward to accomplish our goal? But when you think about it, we have a defender in front of us. We can't go fully south straight through that defender. So to get around this problem and to be shifty, what we typically see is moving side to side or moving laterally a little bit more than we normally expect. So setting it up with a hang to the side or getting out separating to the side. Now the defender stepping up on you and closing out. Getting outside of your defender's frame can be an amazing way to set up those downhill moves or set up those shifty moves that we want to get into. So be comfortable doing this. Find different ways to get out to the side and then working out of that. The more creative that we can get here, the more we can have our defenders playing catch up, the better off we can be and the more shifty we're going to look in the long run. So hopefully these five tools made sense. Again, none of these are moves, but more so techniques that you can use with any moves that you want. I think this is a much better way to think about ball handling. It becomes less robotic, more free, more creative. And if we start training like this and playing like this, we're gonna see our handles skyrocket. So if you wanna train this way, make sure to check out the ultimate ball handling program on my brand new virtual academy. I put the link in the description. It's 10 weeks of training. We really get to it, get creative, train in a really innovative fashion, and I'm excited for you guys to see it. Let's get to work.